Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome along to the vlog. Well, today is Wednesday, the 31st of March. Tomorrow we move into April and the countdown to the reopening of the outdoor space of the brew shed. So next week the sides of this marquee will be coming off. Just leaving the roof to provide us some shelter from any weather. Oh, look at that. Here's me thinking that I'd completed all the electrical work the other day. Turns out I left that off. That could have been a potential problem. Fortunately, this place is locked overnight, so it isn't. Ah, oh, say hello to the glorious Chesterfield Canal, ladies and gentlemen. A little more hen swimming away there. Have you laid some eggs, my friend? It's busy in Retford this morning. It's just gone half past eight. I've been across town to Tool Station and Screw Fix to collect some items to complete many tasks that we've got going on at the moment. I've been really quite busy and I've not picked up the camera much in the past couple of days. So whatever I've been doing probably hasn't been documented. So I'm going to buzz around both the pub and the brewery and give you all a bit of an update on to exactly what is going on or has been going on and what we're doing in the coming days. And we'll capture a nice vlog today, I'm sure. Bridge 56 on the Chesterfield Canal. There we go. Anyway, let's go through through the marquee again into the pub and I'll explain what I've been doing I must remember to come and put that face plate back on the outdoor socket right I'm just gonna get my keys out so over the past few days in the pub I've been carrying out an EICR with my multifunction meter which is an electrical installation condition report to make sure that all the wiring yeah that's dead just so you know but all the wiring is in good condition this all needs tying up up here on uh, fireproof clips and all that kind of jazz but yeah this consumer unit is the main board for the pub and all of the MCBs were different not every circuit had uh, RCD protection and obviously the label on the front was shite so I've been in I've tidied it all up all the wiring now is nice and neat sometimes it's tricky to do it with the tails from these RCBOs but this was an absolute junk bin when I came to it so I've swapped out every single MCB apart from this one this operates another fuse board upstairs for the lights and that's RCD protected on uh, on DB2 and uh, these are three phase sockets and they're all isolated at the other end with RCBs so these are just over current protection here but yeah bought a load of Hager RCBOs so to match with one or two that were already in here i think there was just two looking at this old label and yeah printed a new label for it so we know exactly what's in there removed a three-phase socket which was here and it was only carrying the cellar cooler which when they installed it they wanted a three-phase supply and then they installed this look which just runs at 230 watts so I mean that can run off a 13 amp plug socket with a 3 amp fuse to be fair so I've changed that out which means that freed up three um, fuse ways so I put three more 16 amp MC RCBOs in there in case we want to expand in the future but this gives me peace of mind now so everything on this board is RCD protected so we should be good to go. I've also done insulation resistance testing on all the wiring. 
and uh, all good. There was one circuit which was the restaurant sockets and the top bar area that was a ring circuit and there was a dodgy piece of wire on there so I basically broke the ring got rid of that piece of cable joining the ring together and put it on two separate breakers so now we have two separate radial circuits instead of one ring circuit which it failed the IR test from line neutral to earth with I think it was something like it was just under one meg ohm uh, which might not mean anything to you but uh, anything below two needs looking at anything below one is a fail really so we managed to narrow it down I had to rip the floor up upstairs we'll go and have a look but I had to rip the floor up to find out where the break in the in the cable was or where the dodgy piece of cable was so I imagine there's probably there's probably a jun junction box under the floorboard somewhere and it's been poorly terminated and then by eliminating that piece of wire we kind of just got rid of that here's the other distribution board as you can see it's RCD protected up here and then looking in to the bar all this section came out I did get a bit of footage of that and we ripped the floorboards up managed to cut through a heating pipe but yeah in the end well, Stuart been around and plugged everything back in. He must want that on for some reason. I'll leave it if he's done that. He'll know what he's doing. Yeah, for some reason there was a dodgy heating pipe and an old radiator behind there, which we don't need anymore. So I removed removed that radiator. And it was the ring main it comes up over here, feeds a junction box behind there, and I've spurred off for these sockets here. And then it came across to this. And then it ran across and it didn't go to that plug socket it just went down to the ladies toilets for the fan uh, heater for the uh, hand dryer and then it went across to a plug socket behind that chair and then to a plug socket near that lamp in the corner and then to that socket and then back down to the consumer unit so it was the, between the ladies hand dryer and that socket so we just cut that cable terminated it and taking it off this end as well so the radial circuit ends over here now it doesn't carry on across there we'll just chop that piece of cable out so that's that job done i need to come and fill in the side of that little bit of face plate i may as well take this while i'm here still quite a bit to do upstairs um still is in the process of cleaning down all the kitchen utensils at the moment and uh, getting it all ready for opening what we don't want to have to do is do this in May before we open we can do it now while we're closed uh, so yeah he's doing that I need to move this socket here uh, and, I, and fill that hole but this socket here is going to come up and across and I'm going to mount it probably around here somewhere so we can power this buffalo grill off of it we do this we use this for toasting garlic breads and that kind of stuff I also want to box in this gas pipe and trunk in when the gas fitters came and put this pipe work in I did ask them to drop it as low as possible so we could push you know like below the bottom of there so we could push everything back to the wall but they didn't so that meant we've got this great big pipe sticking out and a great big void down the back which is really quite difficult for everyone to clean as you can see so we're going to get it all cleaned up before we reopen and then what i plan to do is just this section here i'm going to put a little timber box in and we'll tile it we'll put a couple of tiles on it so the tiles come down and across and then when the guys are cooking and what have you, anything that hits on this splashback is going to just land on top of there and they'll just be able to clean it and hopefully everything underneath should stay sparkling. But it is a cooking environment and there are certain things that you can't avoid like a bit of fat out of the cooker. If you spill fat inside the oven 
it's coming out somewhere, isn't it? So this was all from the last week, of course, of us being open and uh, everyone went on furlough. So I said, leave it, lads. We'll clean it before we reopen. Just go home. There's not much else we can do. So uh, we sent the cooks, the chefs, top chefs, Tom and Matt, sent them home. And we said, we'll take care of this before we reopen. And it's not been on the priority list. So it's just been sat there until now. And now we're tackling it, of course. Got to relocate a couple of shelves because the guys have said it's really quite, because of this grill, and it's a beast of a grill, they get a lot of shizzle on this wall. And when we had shelving up there, it was difficult for them to clean because, you know, the shelves were in the way. So uh, if Tom's watching this, he'll not know that I've done this, but this shelf's gone back up above the grill. I know it's not what you wanted to see, but it's over the area of the grill that's not used as much, because I know you guys use the left-hand side. But there was nowhere for this buffalo to live, so that's gone up there. And the good thing about it is it's under the extraction, and it's not in the way of the meat prep table. Then we're going to put another shelf up here, one of those ones that you moved off of there, Tom. And this shelf is going to hold your mixers and whatever else that you need. Um, I was tempted to see if I could squeeze another hand wash basin in over here. So when someone's on the meat prep, they don't have to run all the way across there to the hand wash station. But it might just be a little bit too much in this corner. Ah, so I'm unsure as to whether to do that or not. We'll see. They're only tiny little things. They're not very intrusive. I could probably get away with putting one over there, and I think it'd be a good idea. All this pipe work down here, all wants boxing in as well. So I'm going to have a big old boxing in job, and I'm going to make them removable boxes as well, so we can pull them in and out. This section here, we had a 13 amp socket at the back there, which has given us some nuisance tripping over the past year or two, maybe because it's behind the sink. Or maybe because they were running two 4mm square leads and as a ring into one 13 amp socket. Massive overkill. So we've decommissioned that socket, we've pulled the cables out. We've sent the cables up in the corner there in that trunking. That now comes up to a fused spur on an isolator and also an RCD back at the box. And the uh, 16 amp plug put on this glass wash, so that's better installed. This is the pot wash section, of course. That's the waste area for glass wash, you know, for bits of beer and stuff, what have you. So it's not going in the pot wash sink. And then the second ring, which from this, from that 16 amp socket, which is now two radial circuits, one of them's gone to there, four millimeter square. The other one, under here so we're going to have the microwave sat there for heating sources and that kind of thing because at the moment it's just sat under there another job I've got to do these fridges let me just pan out a little bit they lean forwards a little bit because the floors uneven so I'm gonna because they're empty jack them up and put some washers under the wheel screws to give us a bit more height in the front so they lean backwards and I also have to change the wheels on this because the casters aren't strong enough to hold all this weight of the dishes and also we need to put a reinforcing bar across here so lots to do in the kitchen but we've got until May to get this completed so it's not a huge task well I kind of figured while I'm here fit a, a, a battery powered lamp in front of the circuit board so obviously if power trips and we get some light still over the fuse board so we can see what we're doing that's clever isn't it yeah fire safety light one thing I don't need though is these the fire escape stickers so uh, we'll save them for another application perhaps they'll come in handy for something no doubt but well, that can stay on permanently. It's LED, so it's running like 1 or 2 watts. No power at all. And yeah, if anything trips and it knocks this board out, which it shouldn't, but if it does, then whoever's coming down here don't need to use a torch to see what's going on. That will light up for 3 hours, independently of any external power. <laughs> 